Alright, so in this tutorial I want to cover not anything new, but more along the lines of how the default works by itself. So, let's just jump into that, and it starts in main. So it goes rgss main, and that'd probably be a hidden method. cmanager.run. Now, since we know cmanager is a module, and you can call its method from anywhere, we go to cmanager and we go to run. And what happens? Self.run. Here it is. So it needs, um, initializes uh, data manager. So if we go to here, self.init, last save file, um, load database, create game objects, and um, set up battle test. If you're um, testing, if you're battle testing. So if we look for game objects, uh, load database goes here. If database, then load um, whatever it is you're battling. Otherwise, load normal and check player location. So load normal database means load in actors, classes, skills, items, weapons, and etc. etc. And then load uh, battle test if you're loading battle over here. And then um, check player location. So that would be right here. If data system dot start method is equal to zero, then player pod error and exit. All right. So if you don't have it, if player set anywhere, it's gonna throw you an error. It's gonna exit the entire program. All right. So after it finishes that, it goes back to scene manager, which from run audio dot setup MIDI if you're using MIDI. And then uh, scene equals scene uh, first scene class dot new. Now scene first class is right here. If you're battle testing, then uh, scene battle, otherwise scene title. Now looking at this, you want to understand it, but it's actually doing that. It's actually returning battle test and scene battle and scene title. Um, but Ruby is one of those languages where the last thing you type in, if the last thing you type in is what's going to be returned to a method if you don't have a return uh, keyword in there, so that's why that works. Okay, so um, it's going to do that. It uh, returns your first scene, which would be scene title in most cases, and then scene don't mean while scene. So while scene is not equal to nil. Okay? Now we go down scene dot main, so that would be in scene base. In scene base, you have main here, start, post start, then update until scene changing. Now until is like a while loop sort of, but it's, I think you can tell what it is by the keyword. Until this happens, keep doing this. Okay, so we have start, post start. So in your start method for uh, scene title, you got scene manager, clear, graphics, freeze, create background title, you know all that crap we did before. And then we go to post start, and that's uh, not here, probably. Yep, post start too. Okay then. Then we have update until scene changing. Now, update until scene changing is like I said before. Keep on updating, like every frame until you change the scene. So in scene title, you'd have update somewhere probably, maybe. Nope. Okay then. So you still have update here. Update basic and update basic just updates your graphics, your input, and updates all the windows. Okay, and then um, once you until you when you start changing a scene into something else like scene map, that's when these two are called. Okay, so scene uh, map uh, no uh, pre terminate be here pre terminate does nothing. That's the reason why there's nothing in there is because they want you to alias that and use it. And then they have terminate. Um, graphics up freeze, dispose all windows, dispose uh, main viewport. Alright, so that's another part of their garbage collection. They do it for you. That's why you don't have to really worry about the source of the windows. Okay, so now we'll go to scene title and see what they're doing. Now they actually use uh, some sort of um, command window for this and I need to know where that's being created. Create command window. Okay, that's right there. There it is. Create command window. Let's go on new game, continue shutdown, and these are the methods that they're calling. Now I haven't covered command windows yet, but when I do this makes sense. So method command new game. So when you go command new game, um data manager dot setup new game, close the command window, it's pretty obvious what that's doing obviously. Um fade out the entire screen and then um, game app autoplay. Autoplay means uh, run your auto events and uh, play your music and BGS and stuff. And then scene go to scene map. All right. So you click new game and you go to scene map. Now, pretty simple. Scene manager dot go to. Uh, 
There it is. Scene equals scene class not new. So now you've changed the scene, and it's no, and it's still not nil though. So you still go on scene dot main while scene. So we go back down to scene base, and now we're in scene map. So we're doing this again, and then this, and then we're updating until it's no longer scene map. Okay, and it, that's pretty much the way uh, it works for scenes and stuff. Now inside of most of your scene starts, you will have uh, something about uh, them calling a menu or a window or something or other of that nature. So if we look into update around here, we have game map update. True, I'm not really sure why it's true for anything. I haven't checked that. Gameplay that update, game timer that update. Now game map is obviously your map, so they want you to update. Uh, they're going to update auto tiles, I reckon. Like you have, you know how you have water, how it changes uh, animations a little bit. That would be part of update, I'd, I'd say. And then sprite set update, so that would probably be that too. Um, update scene if scene dot change okay. Now scene dot change okay is remember this is there's a hidden return right here. Game underscore meshes dot busy. So dot busy would be um, oh if. If um your game if you haven't finished your show text message box then you can't change it. Um and if game message not visible so if it's actually visible then you still can't change it. So if uh they're both false then you're good. Otherwise no. And then update scene, check game over. That's a method, obviously. Um update transfer player, unless scene changing, unless scene changing, unless scene changing. That would probably be a lot easier if they had it just went uh Put it there and then put end and then got rid of all of that. Alright, that would be a lot easier, but I'm not going to change the default script. Okay. Alright, and that's update scene. What else we got? We have up, update update scene. If scene change, okay. Now Somewhere there would be if you press uh, input trigger B, which would be X or escape, then it'll open the menu. And when you open the menu, it goes to menu base, uh, menu, which inherits from menu base. And it starts to create the command window, gold window, status menu. So, pretty clear what they are, what they are. Method command, game end. Yep. So we go down and we check it out. And, um, where, what's some look? Command personal, let's go command save. Command save. Where is that? There it is. Scene manager to call scene save. And so scene save is right here. Check it out. It's got the help message telling you select the save file. Um, dot last save file index, which is I think the previous place you saved. And um, unsave OK, then call in super, and super would be scene file, so on save OK would be in here somewhere and on save OK does nothing. Huh, okay. That's alright. Yes, okay. On save success sound up play save and return scene. Now return scene is literally just go back to the scene you were just on. So since we're in um scene menu we'll be calling see when we called scene save and it then just goes back to the menu. Okay. If I was to call in um scene save from scene map and then I exit out of it, it goes back to scene map okay that's all return scene does now for the windows, these are actually created in the, scene, in the scenes themselves so scene item would have, there we go, right here category windows equal to window item category, category dot new and then viewport, viewport a lot of stuff I haven't covered but I'm sure you can probably understand what's going on based on the uh, names so window item category would start uh, here. There it is, and we can see how the window is set up through here. So I'm um, item weapon armor uh, key item and vocab armor. I like how that's spelled with a U in it in the vocab, but not in the actual thing. I find that funny. And then um, yeah, that's how the scenes work. And now we have the game stuff. So I'll go to sprite first. Sprites literally just uh, pictures. That's all they are. They're just the pictures on the map. So your entire game itself is literally just a bunch of numbers and true and falses and booleans and floats and strings and stuff. All sprites do is just put that into a picture so that way it actually looks like a game. So every time you press the arrow key or the 
uh, input C key or anything you do in the game you are just modifying a number or a boolean or something of that nature all a sprite does is just press that into a picture so that way you can see it and it actually feels like a game okay so sprite base is uh, just an inherited class okay so sprite character this has your update your dispose and uh, super so super viewport uh, the character it's with which is a default to nil so if there's no character there's no character and then you have your um, end balloon and then machine and dispose so we go to update bitmap update balloon and if we go to check out update balloon um, somewhere uh, update balloon there we go updates balloon it puts them up and uh, yeah it does all that and then ends balloon if it's finished now the good thing to note is start balloon so we have start balloon here and it's balloon animation sprite uh, sprite bitmap dot ox dot oy and um, this is something to keep in mind because in the next tutorial I I will probably show you one of the scripts I made for balloons it's pretty straightforward and easy to use so um, anyway that's your, your your balloon is in sprite character so yeah then we got sprite battler now obviously a sprite battler is for your battles otherwise you won't see it at all now you can go through there and take a look at what that's doing but um yeah it's the it's pretty much in complete english so if you understand english well enough you can understand most of the stuff that's going on in this uh... code sprite picture now um, this sprite is used to play to display pictures. It observes an instance of the game picture class and automatically changes sprite states. Oh, okay. So this is um, when you go show picture in your events. So um, your second page show picture. You're actually calling that um, class. So you're actually calling this part here, and it actually shows the picture, and it it does all that. Sprite timer should be pretty simple what Sprite timer does, weather, then map and battle. So battle will be your backgrounds, yep, backgrounds, enemies, actors and uh pictures, timer, update and all that stuff. And your map will be here. This stuff. Okay, so now we move on to game. And the games are the ones you want to keep in mind because the game objects are the ones that save your variables. So if you ever need anything saved outside of um if you ever need any of your variables saved, so that way next time the player loads a game, they can load your uh, variables back up as well and continue using it. These are what you need to look into. So we have um, game temp. Now this one doesn't actually save it, contrary to what I just said. The rest of them do though, except for game interpreter. Everything else does. So the class handles temporary data is not included with saved data. The instance of the class is referenced by game underscore temp. Now this is a global, so it means I can access it anywhere. Um, game temp is just your common events, your reserve, all that stuff. And um, your game interpreter will check it, will check uh, your game temp for if anything is not equal to zero. Because if it's not equal to zero, then that means you have to do something. And that means the interpreter has to do something. Okay, so game system. Now, system is, you know, save, disabled, menu disabled, encounter disabled, formation, disabled, battle count, save count, and um, version history. Now, Simple enough. Um, Japanese, that's obviously not true for this one. So, simple enough. Um, you have uh, your tone, your battle BGM, your set battle BGM, and uh, ME on before save and after load and all that stuff. It's um, pretty straightforward. I don't want to really gonna, don't really want to go for the entire thing, but um, if you were to read it, you'd probably be able to figure it out. Now we have uh, self switches. Should be straightforward what they're doing. Switches. Now this is something good to keep in mind because switches are your game switches. You would know what they are. They're your event IDs, but you can use these in scripting. So you can tell someone to activate this switch to turn off this portion of a script, and it's used as an array. So if I wanted to access one of the um, switches, I'd go game underscore switches, and then if I want to access um, switch ID 10, I'd put in 10 and then equals uh, true or false and I can even use that in if statement alright so that's how you get the uh, game switches game variables are the exact same as switches except uh, 
they're often numbers rather than just true and false so you need to uh, check them with an equals equal sign to find out what you're getting from them then your game screen is uh, brightness tone and yeah it should be simple what they're doing alright and we'll keep going down down and down and down and down until basically you figured out what they're all doing so game character is inherited from character base yep character base your ID X Y will write and all this stuff um, ID would be your event ID X Y is your position and then um, real X and real Y this, they check this for um, scrolling purposes alright so common event should be simple what they are followers vehicle events um, all this stuff now contrary to what I said before and they all save that's a lie I'm gonna go for the ones that do um, game system saves um, um, game actors save I'm pretty sure they do game um, game party definitely saves I know they do game system and game party are the two that I know save uh, game map I'm not so sure um yeah so if you need to save you oh game player I think that saves as well. So you have so if you need to save, then go game system and, or game party, and you can save your variables that way. And I'll show you how to do that in a later video. But for now, this one we have kind of gone through the gist of how most things here work. I obviously didn't cover all of them in detail, but to be honest, I think you can do that pretty good job on your own because I got you started. All right, so. With that in mind, as long as you know how the default works, you can pretty much create your scripts to do anything you want. So that's all you need to know, and I suggest you take your time to take a look at how everything works. But aside from that, stay safe, guys.